Steve Wiley is the CEO of Innovega, and he, Steve, and you'll be able to explain this in nauseating detail, which I hope you do. But okay. basically, he's nice the guy. How long have I got? Uh, he, as long as you want. And that does everybody good. Yeah. Out of here. See you next week. Um, you're you're helping people who are legally blind see, right? And that's about in it. a sense. That's in a nutshell. That's pretty well it. Yeah. Because yeah. Mike's still looking for someone who, when he's blind drunk to help him to see. <laughs> so let me ask you this. Um, look at. Yeah, 295 million people around the world who live with moderate to severe visual impairment, okay? Right. And, and look, there's some point where I think you turn about 42 and your right arm isn't long enough to hold the menu, right? Is it, so like out of nowhere, all of a sudden, like you gotta hold your menu out to, uh, it out happened to the with East me Coast. At 40. Yeah, and then, um, so, but you're talking about more severe um, issues with eyesight. Talk about that, yeah. like talk about the, the addressable market here, because it, is, it a, is it a genetic condition, by the way, or is it, it just something that happens? Any and all of, of that. So that's the, the definition of visually impaired, legally blind. It means as thick as those glasses are, are you still can't see. So it, it's just like you went to Costco, you did your best, and you can't read, you can't recognize a loved one, you can't watch TV. They're visually impaired, and if it gets worse, then at some point you become legally blind. And, and clearly those individuals can't drive, they've lost their independence, exactly. lost their quality of life. So what is the difference between sight and functional sight? Because for me, you ever put a, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm hanging on the water wagon on those 1.5 <laughs> readers and realize if I put on a 5.5, oh my God, that's what I used to see when I was 15. At some point, you know, there's the bucket list and there's the effort list. Right, got you know what I'm saying? You yes. get what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. And the effortless means I just can't see anymore. And I think we, we, we grow to just be okay with the way we can see. And I think what you're doing here is, is, uh, is probably bringing that back to folks that can't see at all. Because at this point, man, if I put a pair of glasses on that I should be wearing, I'm Mr. Magoo. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. And, I, yeah. I, and I think you, you sort of like settled. What does that look like in terms of people that really have you know, functional um, issues with their vision? Well, what we've learned is that they're, they're not necessarily all wanting to read the smallest print in the New York Times. They, 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 want, to, they want to be able to see something. They right? just want their life back. They just right. say, hey, just, just uh, I, I used to cook. I, used to, I got these recipes. I can't read them anymore. Elton John says, I'm not going to go to the studio. I can't read the lyrics. I'm done. Oh, wow. So they, they but he said that in 72 after a heroin issue. So <laughs> yeah. No, but the problem is, look at, you got guys like, um, as long as you're talking music, guys like Stevie Wonder. Right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Ray Charles. You got guys that, that, that are legally blind. Right. Are we talking about bringing sight back specifically? Or are we talking about just lifting the bar? Because as I was just saying, I'm okay with just being able to see you right, right. now. Right, right. Like, like to the point where you, you're sort of like, uh, this, this is what happens when you get old, right? Yeah, we ran, uh, it, you know, this total thing about sight. So we, we don't, if you've got cataracts and you've got, you know, AMD, these diseases, we don't fix that. You go get surgery or, you know, you're in trouble for the rest of your life. So the sight piece, the physiology, we don't tamper with. However, what people want is just, I want to act as if I, I could see. Gotcha. So that's what we focus on. So you, so you think about a prescription. You, you talked about 1.5 something readers. Uh, that's a prescription, a lens prescription. We add a digital prescription. And if you put them both together, you enable someone who's not seeing the world to all of a sudden see it interpreted. And this is no surgery and, and, Correct. and, and, no, and no implants. Yeah. So cameras and displays and algorithms, calculations, and you asked earlier, how do people get this way? Well, many of it is age-related diseases. If you live long enough, your eyes go bad, your hearing goes bad, as we all know. Sorry, we're just <laughs> Yes, exactly. And we're living longer. So there's... Well, so we talked about it earlier with the, uh, with the peptide guy yeah. about, about uh, ageism and about longevity. Yeah. You, you know, you've got guys like you know, Andrew Huberman and Peter Attia uh, writing books about, you know, I mean, look, honest to goodness, I turned 65 last Sunday, okay? Um, my dad turned 97, I, and I will tell you, wow. um, part of what I've done last year is gone down a rabbit hole in terms of peptide therapy and NAD plus and so on and so forth, and not to mention to take care of yourself. I mean, I would have been like, it, when my grandfather died when he was 58. I, I mean, wow. it's, it's a different story because yeah. here's the problem. It's the same problem with investing, right? We, we, we put money together if you're responsible, so you have a retirement plan. And I think the retirement plan has changed because when our parents were out, they would wait to retire at 55 or 60, and then they'd go on cruise and stuff. We're all about usable days now. We're retiring as we go along. Right? We're not waiting to take the other experience. We're doing it at the same time. I think the same thing's happening with health, if I'm not mistaken. Like we are little by little wanting to um, cash in on our on our uh, on our good behavior. But the problem is, as you get old, yeah. I mean, look at. I, I'm just telling you, not just for the record. I don't want to be 100. <laughs> I don't want to be around that long. Yeah. At the same time, though, I want to be able to see until I'm. You know, what I got? 20 good summers left, then five really bad ones after that. The Alpo years. How how is this going to help? The current addressable market, 
and what does it do for the current addressable market? And then we're talking about the scalability for the rest of us, because now yeah. I'm starting to think I want some too. Yeah, a lot of it is quality of life. That's what you're describing, and uh, the, those that we uh, we meet and test and such, you know, they, they, they can put their fingers on what it is they want back. Want to see the grandchild? Want to go to a baseball game? Want to read my smartphone? So uh, by providing that, they go from withdrawn, hiding away, why would I go out, I can't mm -hmm. drive, uh, I might trip over something, to, oh, okay, well, that's fixed. So they, they re-engage with society. If, if you wake up one morning and you're blind and you've lost that engagement, you, bad things start to happen. You get depressed very quickly. You Absolutely. get dementia very quickly. So all of that impacts quality of life. I have a question. So um, uh, Jeremy points to know, uh, we, we do a lot of work with the Challenge Athletes Foundation. Jeremy points to know is what they call, um, um, he's got pinhole vision, right? okay. legally blind. Yeah. He, by the way, he's a, he's a, he's a professional golfer. Wow. I'm not kidding. His dad stands behind, which is, he's, he's the only, what they call, blind golfer. So you've got our vision, which is old guys you know, trying to put contact lenses and, and readers on. Then you've got a guy like that with pinhole vision. Then you've got, let's say, as you mentioned, a Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Uh, or Elton John than a Stevie Wonder. Yeah. What is the spectrum in terms of folks you think you can help? Yeah, most of the 295 million, which is going to 475, almost 500 million by 2050, have what's called central vision loss. Wherever they look, they can't see it. It's just a big blur. So that's where we, our first product is dealing with that directly. What you're describing is that they've got pretty good vision in the center. They're able to play golf and hit a ball and see the ball, but they don't know what's happening out here. It's the second product. All of it relies upon digital technology. And, and increasingly, like glasses are connected to the cloud, to the AI, to intelligent agents. So we've got this piling on of like optics technology, digital technology, intelligent work coming together. And it works. We, so, so, so talk about the actual product itself. Talk about product number one. Yeah, so it's a pair of glasses. Uh, it, it looks like glasses, feels like glasses. You put them on, they're electronic. There's cameras and there's displays. That person no longer needs to, well, doesn't see their world well, so we don't let them see their world. We look through a camera and by us taking whatever they're looking at. So for example, if that was your watch and they're looking at your watch, they say, well, I can't see nothing. If that watch was like six feet high, they'd say, well, that's a pretty damn nice watch because at six feet high, they can interpret it. They can see the dials, etc." So we have to give them the impression that they're looking at a watch six feet high as opposed to a watch on your hand. And is this where AI comes in? Is this where, where uh, or, or, or uh, you're, I'm assuming there's IP, there's intellectual property here in terms of? Filed 80 patents. So everything we do is very novel. I mean, it, this was judged impossible. We started our company because we said, smart glasses are gonna happen. We got smartphones. Some of us have got smart watches. It's inevitable. But how do you get this really big virtual experience in glasses? Well, smart smart glasses now mean that, uh, like if Mike put a pair of glasses on, he could have a script going and you wouldn't know it. Correct. Or, or he could right. be taping or videotaping what's going on around him. Or uh, if the doctor, they even have glasses where you look at the patients giving them blood pressure and so on and yep. so forth. This is a different type of smart glass. It's a different, it's a different lane, right? It's the extent of it. So you could have a small screen that would give that script or you give the doctor a little you know, postage stamp viewing off to the corner, which says, hey, you know, put the knife here. That's one thing. Ours is a big, expansive VR experience. So think about a VR headset. You know, yeah, the Oculus virtual headset, reality, right? VR. Virtual reality as in a huge experience. How do you get that in a normal pair of glasses? And then what would you do with it? Well, you could certainly be involved in gaming. Tencent, one of the largest gaming companies in the world, was our first investor because they say this is the future of gaming. VR is the future of the gaming. And then guess what? The kids aren't wearing VR headsets. None of the three of us are wearing a VR headset today because they're bulky and heavy and goofy. And claustrophobic as well. And claustrophobic. But if there were a pair of cool glasses like you're wearing Absolutely. there, Absolutely. make all the difference. That's Steve the Wiley is the CEO of Innovega. Their website, innovega.io. That's I-N-N-O-V-E-G-A dot I-O. I think you know, what's interesting is, is your advanced smart glasses uh, restore is called Functional Sight. Uh, I'm gonna keep you for an extra segment here. So you're, you're locked Fantastic. Um, you're also donating to a challenge. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the, <laughs> but but, but uh, what I wanna figure out is, I, I think when we come back, we're gonna talk about, you mentioned on the break that you'd like to get a hold of folks like you know, maybe Stevie Wonder or Elton John yeah. or something like that, um, which I think James could probably arrange. We get Phil and James to get him and Stevie together. I mean, seriously, I mean, it could happen because what I, on the next break, we're gonna talk about, I, I wanna reveal what that looks like to a person that is totally blind. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in terms of, because you know, you think in terms of VR, mm -hmm. are we, are we, is the message going to their head? Is it going to their eyes? So on and so forth. Much more to come. His name is Steve Wiley. CEO of Innovega, doing great things for people who can't see great things. Can I, uh, can I ask you about, before we get to your, your staff, you have a whole team over here that are drinking up in the club over there. Is yeah, this, yeah. They, I know. Oh, they're, they're still oh, standing up. Beautiful. Woo! They're behaving. 
Are these guys your, is your marketing team? That's my marketing team. All right, very introduce good. Introduce them. We have, we, Joseph, introduce them. Joseph. Okay. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let's, uh, let's say we have, do have applause. Do we have applause? Thanks. Joseph. Joseph, you got to stand up now. Take Chelsea. two. That's a good stand up. Good job. Chelsea, stand up. And your daughter, Leon? Yeah, my daughter. Beautiful. Sully accused me of being your father, and that's not true. I know, I meant grandfather. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a grandfather. Sorry. Uh, let me, so, okay, so, if we're, of course, if you're coming back, but Steve Wiley uh, in Ovega, um, we're talking about smart glasses that actually restore functional sight. What is functional, so, so talking about the definition, what's the bar for functional sight? For functional sight to us means that it's meaningful from the standpoint of the person gets to live life again. Okay, so is it individualized? So my functional sight would be, boy, it sure would be great to be able to read a menu or be able to read a book. Or yeah. actually, I've got a contact lens now that doesn't work. I mean, I, think of me, ladies, because I wear one contact lens. <laughs> Either think of me as a patch man in the 1960s, those Scotch commercials, or me with a monocle is basically what I have. So, uh, so I've, I've got a reading lens in the left eye. And so and my brain has learned over the last seven right. years to figure it out. I would just love to take the things out for a minute. And then, but I, if I do, and I try to read, it looks like I'm swimming through, it feels like I'm swimming through water. That's what yeah. it looked like. So that's, for me, the bar would be something different. For a Stevie Wonder, yep. or for an Elton John, yep. as you mentioned in the beginning, what is functional sight to them? Well, Elton John said he's not going to uh, the studio to write lyrics and read lyrics because it's just too frustrating. He says his life is just gone. Can't watch the kids play soccer. I mean, he's a laundry list. Stevie Wonder would have something else. He'd say, yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm enjoying my music. I got sure. my fans. On the other hand, there's this one thing that I wish I could do. That becomes a functional piece. We're meeting someone this afternoon, and, and he tested our glasses, and he said, this just changes everything. He's making an investment in the company, but we dug in a bit more, and we said, what, what exactly is it that changes everything? He said, baseball. He said, I used to get out to that game like three times a week, different games, different venues, et cetera. He said, my life is shut down. So for him, functional sight is watching his favorite players on that team um, play. So talk to us about um, someone who's legally blind. Mm -hmm. Can't, has like, let's see, we keep on using Stevie Wonder's example. Right. Been blind since birth. Yep. How is he possibly able to, w without connecting something to his brain yep. and playing a video for him in his brain, how does this work? The distinction we make is if there's no sensitivity to light, you are blind, blind, blind. That's the definition of blind. There's, there's nothing happening at the retina at the back of the eye. We cannot deal with that. If the retina has some sensitivity, but it can't do much with the information, and that's why the world is like just a blur, we can do a lot with that. And we can play digitally with their brightness and contrast and color. Maybe some people see reds better than blues. Maybe some people need really bright, it, uh, a bright environment to see, and others, if you have albinism, you need a really dark environment. Is it real? Is so, it real time? Does it adjust in real time? For, for yeah. We basically set it up. Uh, now, you ask about the intelligent. Here's yeah. a cool thing on the intelligence, the uh, intelligent agent. So this connects to the phone. The phone connects to the cloud. The cloud has got agents. And you say, I'm going to let this agent look through my little tiny camera in my glasses. You know the camera on your phone? So if you're legally blind and you're walking and you think you've got everything under control, but there's a curb coming up and it's six feet away and it's really difficult to see, your agent's going to be whispering in your ear, you've got a curb coming up six feet, six inches down. You might have missed it completely. So now you get a third prescription. It's like, hey, one thing I miss all the time are those darn curbs. So layering it all on makes the magic happen. You've you got a Gen 2 system that pairs smart glasses with, with uh, nanoactive contact, contact lenses. Is that, what you, is, that, is that this section here or is it something different? No, yeah, no, it's, it's just an extension. It's like higher octane from the first pair of glasses. The first pair of glasses, maybe that enables 50% of that 300 million there, 295 million, to have their quality of life restored. But what about the ones that are at the far end? Like you said, Stevie Wonder. What if we check Stevie Wonder and, and he's been a certain way so long that he's got not much happening at his retina. But even right? but even getting the ball down the field a yard for someone who's who's blind. That's what we've learned. I well, mean, right? I mean, it's, isn't it, I mean, it's not about getting to here. What if yeah. you're just to here and you weren't before, yeah. right? It, it, it's remarkable because you know we're, we're a bunch of good engineers. We we start companies that do difficult things, and we thought we had to get that tiny so, print. So, so talk about Arthur Zhang, your CTO from Apple Vision, because uh, so the, he's he's one of your guys. Yeah, he's he was uh, one of the lead architects of the Apple Vision Pro. So they must have spent billions of that's dollars. The, that's the new where I can you know remember the Tom Hanks movie or Tom Tom Hanks. It's like I call it uh, Tom Cruise movie where he's moving stuff around. Right. You right. can actually work on your. In fact, I, I sent one of those systems to Rome from Sublime 
who actually is using it to write music now. He's moving stuff as he as, as he's not having. You, so this he he architected that. Is right. he part of this now? He is part of this now. He's uh, he's joined as an employee, and he's got two passions. Number one is glasses are supposed to look like glasses, and we're supposed to bring best of breed technology to the glasses. And number two is hey, those patients. You 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 know, if you were just doing defense, that's interesting. When I say just, yeah, it's yeah. like gaming enterprise defense. But if you're going out, you're going to these patients and meeting them, you know, where they have the need, I'm in, I'm in. And that's what's happened in our company. So we started our company just looking for something really difficult to solve. I was going to ask you, what, what was the genesis of, uh, of Innovega? It, it was this expectation that we would move from smartphones and smart watches to smart glasses, but we'd all want bigger TVs, bigger monitors, et cetera, and you couldn't get those in smart glasses. So yeah. our company was started. Okay, we're going to do the impossible. We're going to get these big experiences in normal glasses. That's how it started. And then from there, it was pick the first app, and we picked patients. The, the very cool way of thinking about patients is that we've, um, there's an impairment of some sort, whether it be hearing or memory or sight, et cetera. Yeah. Um, and we want to bring best of breed technology to the patient. Well, where do you bring it? Do you bring it in a cell phone that you got to kind of bring out of your pocket every 10 minutes? No, you put it in a pair of glasses. You know, it's interesting because I was just looking up what you're talking. Yeah. Um, the word um, iPhone was not our lexicon uh, until 2007. Amazing. Right? They, 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 uh, yeah. iPad, or I beg your pardon, uh, iPad, I think it was 2009. Yeah. Think about that. So you're talking about 15, 18 years ago, we had the first iPhone, and now we're talking about the next generation. It's going to explode. I mean, that's pretty, that, I would say that's arguably is faster than the speed of light. I mean, it, yeah. it, it's, what's next for you guys before you let you out of here? What, what do you got next? Yeah, well, we're with that first product that we described, we've been we've prototyped it, we've built samples, we've tested 15 patients, we've uh, published the results, hey, you know, basically test the patients in good, bad, or the other, we publish it anyway. On average, uh, it's been reported that the patients achieved 20-20 normal vision for reading and for wow. distance, okay? Now, we're taking it commercial. We've got the largest uh, contract manufacturer in, in Taiwan, one of the top handful of Contract manufacturers, they make product for Apple and Microsoft. Mm -hmm. We're within a week of contracting with them and taking this product to market next year. So, and Is there any FDA issue? Any, any, is there an archivist story with the FDA? Does it have to be, does it have to be approved as it's an not. advice? It's beautiful. So if, you, if, if we want to launch this product in Istanbul or, you know, we've got complete latitude. Amazing stuff. Steve Wiley, the CEO <laughs> of Innovega. Again, the website. Innovega.io, I-N-N-O-V-E-G is in George, A.io. You, you got to promise to come back in studio and, and just. Anytime. Thank you for this that, invitation. That's the story gross. That does it for us, Michael. That, that is going to do it for us. To everybody out there who makes this show possible by watching it, we always appreciate it. We'll see you next time here on The Big Biz Show.